So 10 years ago, I believe you visited the Cat House on Kings? Yeah, the Cat House on the Kings, yeah. On the Kings, sorry. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so how did this how did this wonderful sanctuary change your life? Oh, it was huge. It was like, um, you know, we talked about this. We had a feral cat. We, we've always had feral cats come to our house because we have lots of cats. And a feral cat, a wild cat, will, will just sense that cat people live there. And a feral cat obviously cannot be pet or touched uh, or anything. They're, they're wild animals. But we've done this over the years and we fed feral cats. So, uh, you know, I guess it's a little bit over 10 years ago, we were moving from our apartment. And just as we were about to move, a feral cat showed up. And it was like, feed me. And I, we were like, yes, of course we'll feed you. But we're moving. And it, we were faced suddenly with this prospect of like, what are we going to do? This, this, this animal is like dependent upon us now, but we're moving. It got to the point where I was like literally driving across town every day <laughs> to leave food. It's this empty house. The cat was standing there. It was the saddest thing. He's, he's like, where's my food? I'm like, I'm driving across town. We, I can't keep this up. I can't expect the new tenants to, to take care of him or whatever. So I started looking into rescues and looking into um, that whole world. And it's a, you know, again, I became educated. I was like, wow, there's just... There's just tons of kill shelters. If you bring an animal to a regular shelter, likely they will be killed. Certainly a feral who can never be adopted, rarely. Um, what do you do with a feral cat? And so after a lot of research, I found this one place, which I'd never heard of, the Cat House on the Kings, which was this one woman's massive property up near Fresno that she had turned in this ranch-style multi-acre property into this sanctuary an adoption center where she had, you know, almost a thousand animals that were totally cared for. It wasn't an, it wasn't a hoarder. It was like an operation. Sure. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, you know, we actually have a feral, you know, section. And if you can catch him, you know, you can bring him here. Right. And I was like, wow. And where all of her, everybody else was like, we're full up and they'll kill him. And all that. this was the one place. And when I, when I went up there, it was like one woman and a couple of, you know, maybe one other person and all of these animals. And I was like, this was like the definition to me of like a saint. Like this was like this woman who had dedicated her whole life to, to these animals, literally, and was like making it work. She, she definitely needed help. But, she, and I, I said to myself, my God, well, what, what can I do in exchange for this? You know, you save this cat's life and these thousands of other dogs and cats. So I decided to make this, YouTube video. I said, I'll come back and I'll do a portrait of you and the place a couple minutes and, you know, we'll put it on YouTube. And this is when YouTube was sort of new, you know, and, and it just, we just, as luck would have it, there were enough cat people out there that it started to go viral and people really saw that this was a, this beautiful soul that was doing something so unique and she started to get donations and it started to get more well known. And now, you know, 10, 13 years later, it's a, it's a, it's considered, you know, it's a very well-known institution, you know, around the world. People come from all over the world to visit this place and support, support it. So it's a big part of Search and Rescue's story. Um, the ending of the whole movie actually happens at the cat house. It actually takes place at the cat house. And I'm trying to talk Linnea Latanzio, the, the proprietor, into actually playing herself Oh, nice. In the movie, if she'll agree to do it, because <laughs> she's such a character. But yeah, the whole movie actually resolves at the cat house. Have you thought about what would have happened if you had moved one week earlier and never met that Yeah, no, I hadn't really thought of that. It's been such a, you know, my wife has said, you know, it's the most important film you ever made was that film for the cat house. Because, you know, talking about direct action, that film, because it went viral, because I made it, because it exists, and it reached people that that institution, that sanctuary received much needed donations that saved a lot more animals. And so in terms of doing something that's valuable, truly valuable, that little film, you know, when I think about it, you know, is, is you know, definitely up there as being an important movie of mine just because it helped, it ultimately helped a lot of animals. Do you know how many views that video has? Well, I, I think, you know, I think now it's, you know, it's well over a million views, but it, but it, um, yeah, you know, like, but conversely, you know, like I did this, you know, fun monster thing for YouTube years ago, <laughs> Fear Force 5, that has 50 million views now. Oh, wow. Okay. But the million and a half or whatever that the cat house is way more valuable because that, 
that just means something in, re in real world terms. You know, there were a lot of animals that got saved because people gave because they saw the video. So, yeah, I'm, I, don't, I don't know what would have happened. Certainly, search and rescue wouldn't have evolved the way it did because my, there's, a, there's a cat component and there's a feral component and a rescue component uh, to the story that is, that is a, a thread in this crime story. Um, that is the direct result of my experience with, with the Cat House on the Kings and why I feel it's appropriate to end the movie there. Even though there's gangsters and assassins and pornographers and all this other stuff in the movie, it ultimately ends at the Cat House, you know, which is like the sweetest place on earth.